Halleluja. Oder Glück lässt, wenn ich heim bin. Just not bright as it was. Come scream bright now. There's a glory angel singing right there. Sing the presence of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Look how he's singing. His mouth is wide open. I heard the Lord say I heard him say I don't know if it was an angel he was speaking to or what but he was saying friend how did you get in without the proper wedding garment I heard him saying, friend, how did you get in without wearing the proper wedding garment? And I was in awe as he said it because the Bible tells us to put on righteousness, to be clothed in righteousness and that righteousness comes from being washed with the blood and it comes from him Jesus because he is our garment of grace he is our righteousness so I heard him saying friend how did you get into the wedding banquet how did you get into, how did you get in here without the wedding garment? And there was no reply. There was no reply because there could be no reply. There was no reply because he is the Lord, our righteousness, and there could be no reply. Because without him, he says that all that enter in are thieves. What does that mean? All that come without his blood. So for the wedding supper and the wedding reception, we have to enter through his precious blood and his righteousness he is our clothing it says that the righteous acts of saints were the fine linen and our bright garment is fine white linen So, when he was addressing the man that got into the wedding supper, he was telling him that he's not with the proper attire. You know, for, for different functions, we need to wear certain things. So if we know something's formal, something's formal, something's not formal, or... In this case, for heaven, we have to put on the right clothing. And the Lord gives us the right clothing. There is no way that we can enter into the wedding reception 
without being clothed in righteousness. There is no way There is no way but Yahweh. He ordained it before the beginning of time. This is the way that he made it. That's why when he came as Jesus Christ, he honored that name. Because this is his way. There is no entering in without the blood and without Jesus. You heard me. As our righteousness. There is no entering in to the wedding supper without him as our righteousness. There is no entering in. You could try and sneak in and say you're sneaking in. But the Bible says that he said to the man, friend, how did you get in here without the proper wedding? Yeah, I saw I was going to do that. Without the proper wedding garment. Friend, how did you get in without wearing the proper garment? Only those in the proper, yeah, only those with the proper garment are going to enter in. I see you. Hi. Hallelujah. <laughs> so only those in feel him all the time. Without him, I could do nothing. And I don't say that to excuse myself, but I say that because it's true. The more I try in my own, the harder I fall. And there are times I just need to let go and let him. And there's a breaking, and there's a pruning, and there's still a work being done inside of me. As I strive to put on the proper garment, as I try to be all that he asked me to be. And he said, friend. So I heard him saying, friend. To the man in the wedding banquet, how did you, how did you enter in without the right clothing? How did you enter in without the right clothes? You know, if you go to a formal event and you wear formal clothes, you look weird. You just don't fit in. The Bible says that there is no unclean thing in heaven. So we have to put on what righteousness. That's why he said, seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. We have to seek righteousness at all costs and it will cost us. Yeah, I see you standing there. Do you have a scroll for me? Do you have a scroll for me? I hear him saying, seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. At the thing we think we mastered by ourselves. Because in the failing, there's a cutting and there's a pruning. It's like if the dress has to be perfect or the outfit has to be perfect for the uh, the event. And like a thread 
or maybe um am I right to take a thread like a thread or like um no not there like a thread or like something that needs to be mended like a button or maybe a zipper or just something that I'm saying yeah I see him there <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah so it's like a thread he turned straight towards me he turned around two of them so like a thread that needs mending or like a button or like a zipper or like a, a, a tear on a garment you know when he says that you can't put old wine in new wine skins and new wine in old wine skins it's like that you need to take and we need to take the garment to uh, a seamstress or a tailor or you know somebody with a, a professional background in it somebody who can who can um, mend the tear who can mend um, mend the garment make it new make sure that there's nothing uh, missing that's required we had the coronation just a while ago of um, that guy King Charles right you know how everything was perfect for him to do what he did like his garment was spotless and seamless and like like that's what I mean like just like brand new I hear others saying that it's only him It's only him that we become brand new in. And he's like the spotless tailor. He's like the spot. So I hear the Lord saying that we have to go to the one that can mend the garment. That can prepare the garment that we need to enter into the marriage supper or the banquet that he's holding. Because if the garment is torn, it's not going to look good. If the, the garment needs a button, it's not going to look good. If the garment ha needs a zipper, it's not going to look good. If it looks dirty and raggy and shaggy, it's not going to look good. So I heard him saying that he is the only one that is capable of washing, that is capable of mending, that is capable of presenting this garment. It, he's the only one. He's the only one. Okay, yeah, I see what it did. It broke back straight to me. So he refuses to leave us to mend this thing alone. He refuses to leave us because we can't mend ourselves. There is no way that we can mend ourselves. There is no way that we could patch this garment. Where we fail, He has prevailed. The thing that we fail, by or in he has overcome so i heard him saying to this man who got into the wedding supper friend and when he said friend i said that's so strange that he would say friend but he said friend how did you get in here without wearing the proper garment how did you get into the wedding banquet without wearing the proper wedding attire and then the rest of that is bind him hand and foot and throw him out into where hellfire so he said friend how is it you got in without wearing the righteousness of the lord 
Because Jesus Christ is that righteousness. He is the one that prevailed where we fail. We're in a human body because we're here to show that the Spirit can lead. But as much as we want the Spirit of Yahweh to lead, we fail. We have to admit that we fail. Confession is unto repentance. Confession is unto salvation. Confession is unto Him allowing to sew the garment. The Bible tells us that we are His sheep. That we are his sheep of his fold. And if we're not his sheep, then we're butting the shepherd. Then we're not sheep at all. Then we're goats. Because if he's the shepherd and we're the sheep, then we have to follow the shepherd. And it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard with temptations. It's hard with the world that's darkening. It's hard with people around. It's hard. It's hard when you're invited. It's hard. But unless we want to enter into the banquet that the king has held. There's an angel with a scroll. I see him right there standing like a man. Oh, he has a trumpet in his mouth too. He has like a shofar in his mouth. Unless we want to enter, unless we want to go into hellfire, then we could just do as we please. Then we could just say as we please. Then we could just not listen to the shepherd. Because he is the Lord, our righteousness. And it takes bro brokenness. It takes crying. It takes being by ourselves with Him. It takes losing some things. It takes giving up some things. It takes every possible thing that He has required. It takes. And without us listening to Him, without us even yielding to him, we fail. And he allows it to be that way because when we fail, we realize that we need him. Anyway, form or fashion. Whether it be physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, we can fail him in these things and we do fail him. So he tells the man in the wedding supper, friend. But he says, you are my friends if you do what I, you, if you do what I command you. So he's calling this man and he's saying, friend. Which means that they keep the commandments of the Lord, but... Jesus is not their righteousness because even if we press in from the day we were born to the day that we die we fail him and that's why he is the Lord our righteousness he's already prepared a perfect report from our conception to our departing He's already prepared a perfect report so that when he looks at us, he sees himself. But it's hard to cling to him. It's hard to allow him to do the work in us because we live in a physical world. Temptations everywhere. And this man that got into the wedding supper and sat there, he kept the commandments of you. Because he said, he said, friend, and he said, you are my friends if you do what I command you. So which means that he was a good man. But our goodness is not enough. Our goodness will never be enough because our greatest holiness and our greatest fast and our greatest goodness before a holy God is filth and worms. 
You heard me. Our greatest goodness before a holy God. I see him stretched out his hand. What is he doing? He's standing there. Our goodness and our greatest fasting and our greatest holiness before a holy God is still filth. We adopted Adam and Eve's sin and it continued in our skin. As long as we are in skin, we are sinners. As long as we are in this flesh, Papa, we are sinners in need of a savior who saves the God who is mighty to save. Without Jesus, we're not going anywhere into heaven. He is the Lord, our righteousness. And it's not by what we do, but it's what he has done for us. So now that we receive what he did for us, now we allow that work that is complete this he's our Abba father that wants us in heaven whether he comes today tomorrow next week next year same time he wants us in heaven the world is anticipating his return because we can see prophecy after prophecy happening as the fulfillment of biblical scripture comes to pass so we know without a doubt that he is coming and beloved he could come today and just end everything because he's God he can do it but he's so loving and he's so pure and he's so holy and he's so good that he desires us in heaven with him he wants the work to be done in us because when he comes that work has to be complete the work was already completed on my cross but the work has to be complete in us see the holy angel right there they are dispatched to us to help us remember they are ministering spirits confirming this word and confirming this message but let's stick to the message because the just shall live by faith. Faith requires a stepping without seeing. You just do it because you know it's good. In God's sight, you just press in. Press into his presence. Press in to who he is. Press in. He says we just have to press in, beloved. Righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's the righteousness of who he is. Yes, we press. We press in to the, to, I, I don't want to say the mark, but we press in. We press in to reach the goal. We press in. We have to press even if we feel we get up and we try harder he dusts us off and he says come on i've done it for you and you can do it you can do all things in me get up and try harder we press in we do what he has already done and we accomplish this thing because his spirit contains how do i say his spirit holds exactly what we need think of a battery Think of a battery. We don't run out of the strength. We don't run out of the faith. We don't run out. But we have to allow him. So that he doesn't say, friend, how did you get in here without the proper wedding garment? Because he said, those who do, if you do what I command you, you are my friend. Can you see your crown? If you do what I command you, you are my friends. 
because he called Abram friend. But now since he has come as Jesus Christ, it's what he has done along with what we do with what he has done. So where we feel where we cannot do what he has done, he has already done it. That's why it is written that we're saved by grace through faith, lest any man should boast. It's not of ourselves. We cannot boast in what we do. We have to boast in what he's done, even though we're required to do as he did and to do as he has said. There's no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. So this man that got into the wedding supper with the wrong clothes meant that he was covered by his own good works and not what Jesus Christ had done on the cross. He was covered with his own goodness. I want you to see that angel right there in the middle. He's coming through. I tell you they're all over. Because we're glorifying the precious blood of Jesus now. So, Our goodness before a whole... There he is, King! Papa! There he is! The King of Glory, peoples! Our goodness before our holy God is filth. So when the man tried to get into heaven or into the marriage supper or into the wedding banquet through his own works, it was filth before the king. It was filth before a holy God. He said he threw a, a banquet for his son. And we know that Jesus Christ is represented as the Son of God who came and died on the cross of Calvary. So this man that entered into the wedding banquet came without the Son of God's righteousness, came without the Son of God's holiness, came without the righteousness that precedes all righteousness. Hallelujah. So then he didn't get to stay for the party. He got cast out into the, the weeping and gnashing of teeth, the fire that's not quenched. What am I saying? Am I saying that we're just to receive what Jesus has done on the cross and continue to be filth? No. There is a baptism of fire that is unto repentance. There's a baptism of fire that is unto forgiveness. There's a baptism of fire that is unto reconciliation with Yah. And He wants us to receive that baptism. The baptism of His presence. The baptism of what He's done. The baptism that we are so overtaken by His love. That we're so overtaken by what He's done. By who He is. The baptism of Him. That we just continually press in to be led by His Spirit. That we continually press in. Not once, not twice, not when we feel like, but every single waking moment, every single day, every single time, we try, we at least try. He wants it, beloved. He wants that. He desires that. Into His presence, there He is. The King of Glory! <laughs> Ta -ta. You got to understand how much He wants that baptism for us. He, John says, He baptized with water. 
But he who comes after me baptizes with fire. And Jesus said, <laughs> he said, King, he showed up. Jesus said, how distressed I am until I kindle that fire. How distressed I am until I kindle. I came to kindle a fire on the earth. And how distressed I am until that fire is kindled. He said, how distressed I am until that fire is kindled. Somebody said, kindle that fire within me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me not to yield to the flesh. Help me to yield by your spirit. Because this baptism is unto repentance. It's the angel of the Lord, hallelujah. They're coming. They're coming to assist. They're coming to help. The heirs of salvation, they're coming to help. How distressed I am. How distressed I am. Until I bring that fire on the earth. Kindle that fire. Kindle that fire. Tell him, say, Jesus, Jesus, say, kindle that fire, the holy angels are coming, they're coming to assist. There are so many of them. That are coming to assist because they know and they desire and they want us in heaven with them glorifying the Lord magnifying the Lord you gotta cry like you never cried before <laughs> say Jesus Jesus <laughs> Jesus cry out cry out cry out for a Holy Ghost fire baptism Shavuot the day of Pentecost was as the day of the cross come on come on come on Tell him, tell him like you never told him before. I need you. Oh, I'm not going into heaven. I need you to do what you need to do. I need you to fix up some things. I need you to make some things right. I need you, Jesus. He said, I came to baptize with a fire and how distressed I am until I kindle it on the earth. Say, kindle it, Lord. Kindle it. Burn within us. Burn within us. Burn within us. He'll come like a mighty rushing wind. He'll come at the moment of decision. He'll come, he'll come, he'll come now. He'll seal up his temples now. He'll wash now. He'll cleanse now. He'll recompense now. He'll recompense. He'll recon he reconcile now. He'll reconcile now. He will do the thing. He will do the thing and you will glory in him. Don't glory in yourself. You will glory in him. You will glory in him. You will bless his name as the God of heaven and earth. Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. A Messiah, you will bless his name and you will glorify him.
I see him. Hello. You will glory him. You will seek him. And you will find him. You have to look, beloved. Just look. Just dare to take a look. Dare to take a look in secret place. Dare to press into the unknown. Uh, dare to press into the secret place. Say, I want to know this Jesus. I want to know exactly who you are. Not who I think you are. And not who people told me that you are. Because everything is failing on this earth. And I could see this world hating on you. I want to know you in a real way. In a way that I could not put into words. In a way that consumes my soul with fire. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to draw near to you. I want to be near to you. I don't want to be far from you. I want to draw near to you. I want to be about your kingdom. I want to be about your business. Not just sometimes, but all the time. All the time. Oh, come on, beloved. Worship Him. Bless the holy name of Yah and worship Him. Bow down in His presence and worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. So arise to your rest and be blessed in this place. You see, even as we think our works are good and they're so good that we go to heaven through our works. Jesus Christ has to be our righteousness. He's, it's his works. Then our works intertwining with it. Our works can never be enough without Him. Never. Never. You heard me? We could never be enough without Him, and we'll never be enough without Him. That's what He said. He said, not everybody who said, Lord, 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 will enter into the kingdom. When you saw me hungry, you didn't feed me. You saw me crying, you didn't comfort me. When you saw me naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. It's time to be about our Father's business even more than before. Not by might, nor by power, but my spirit, says the Lord. He says, by His Spirit, His Holy Spirit. Can't expect to be, can't expect to be bottle fed in a time such as this. You've got to be bottle feeding the lambs that are coming in, the ones that are now receiving him. You ought to know him by now. You ought to love on him by now. Be doing great things for him. He wants that. He desires that. That's what I heard him say. Else, it's the part for me, you evil who work of iniquity. You're not wearing the proper garment. So they part into everlasting fire. I present a pre 
prepared for the devil and his angels. He wants us to be ready for his coming. He wants us to be ready for his glorious appearing. So be ready. Press in. Be ready. Here. Whatever we have to endure till his glorious coming, beloved. You want to be ready for it. It's only by spirit. And it'll only be by his spirit that we overcome. The Bible says that we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, which means his spirit at work. That's how we're overcoming Satan in this world. And we're going to have to face a lot of things for choosing goodness and godliness in him, Jesus. We're going to face persecution. They're going to leave us out of things. It's called outcasting. There's going to be so many things. Persecution, execution, all kinds. And it's already been happening long before. He wants us equipped and ready. That's what I heard him say. Put on the right garment for the wedding supper. Put on the right garment for the banquet of the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's no other way. There is no other way. Beloved, the glory clouds have come down. So arise to your rest and be blessed in this place right here as we glory in your grace Shabbat Shalom beloved if you don't know him as your Savior and your Lord you're waiting on receive him now receive him now ask him to come in ask him to wash ask him to fill the work do the thing he does he will do the thing and he does and he is and he will Just ask him, say, Jesus, come and wash me in your precious blood. Fill me up with the Holy Spirit of you as Yahweh. Fill me up. Say, be shepherd and Lord of my life and lead me. Not just lead me. Do in me the thing that needs to be done. Do in me the thing that needs to be done. Whatever that is. Crucify the flesh. Help me to live and walk according to the Spirit. And He will. I forsake religion and traditions of men. And I receive you, God. Because He desires you in heaven. He desires us in heaven with you. Hallelujah. Just tell Him I forsake religion and traditions of men. And I run to you, God. So do the work in me. Do whatever needs to be done. Baptize me by fire. Purge out everything that is not of you. Baptize me by fire. The angels are celebrating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I confess you now, Jesus Christ, that's my personal Savior. And my Lord God. Hallelujah.
be shaping the Lord of my life and I follow you. Work in me, work in me, work in me. Work in me, do the work in me, work in me. And he will. He will. He does. He's doing that thing now. He's making it good. Hallelujah. He's making it good. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's preparing you for heaven. It's preparing us for heaven. Because if we also suffer with him, we'll also be glorified with him. Beloved, shalom.